Welcome back. Well, as promised in an earlier video, I mentioned that I would do a review of this camera that I'm holding in my hands right now. But in order to do that, I needed a second camera, obviously. And I mentioned that I was getting a holder for my tablet to use on a tripod, which is what you're looking at now. Now, this particular unit came from a company called iCross. I did find it on eBay. It was $11, I believe, with the shipping. And that's exactly what I needed it to be, just a cheap, quick mount for my tablet. Uh, it says it holds up to a 7 inch all the way up to a 10.1 inch, which my Samsung Galaxy Note is a 10.1 inch, as you can see here. Now the wife's Digitaland tablet, which I did a review on, uh, it doesn't fit. It's too small. It doesn't grip it. But that's okay because I wasn't planning on using that anyway. I did want to use this. Now I, I mentioned that tripod in the other video. I also mentioned this Ravelli tripod. And I said I would need to have a second source of video. Well, I got that second source. So if I come over here now and try to do this on the viewfinder, I can actually go ahead and show you there is an app here for this, um, for this camera. It's the Panasonic Image app. Now, I know this works with other devices, but basically this app here will allow your phone or your tablet or whatever Android device you're using to control the camera either as a remote or you could use it as a home monitoring system, a baby monitor, so on and so forth. And one of the other things you can do is, is actually send the camera signal from this device to the camera and in the corner of the picture right around here someplace you'll actually have a little thumbnail and the premise of it is is let's say you're using this camera here to film your kid I don't know in the kitchen making something like he's like your kids making you a birthday cake or something your your wife or vice versa you know how you you insert the scenario to your own liking but they have the other device and they may be filming you so you can get your reaction to what your kid is doing in the main video and record it at the same time, which is pretty dang neat. My thing is, is I'm gonna have one of these off to the side getting a secondary angle of what I'm doing on my bench over here because most of the time you guys are just used to seeing this kind of a view or that kind of a view or some of the videos I have the thing set up over here but you don't really get a chance to see the entire lab. Um, so and I apologize for the hand motions here because I can't really use my good tripod right now and the old tripod doesn't move as smoothly. And this camera actually has pretty nice optical image uh, stabilization on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do some of this by hand. But part of the other reason why I haven't done this yet is because the software that comes with this camera for editing isn't the greatest. I will show you some of that in this video as well, but it's hard to mix and match different formats. In fact, a lot of the videos that you may have watched in this channel had a, a little intro to it. And that intro was recorded in a different format initially. So when I switched over, I think it was like AVHCD, and then when I switched over to MP4, I had to actually upload the intro video to YouTube and then upload whatever videos I wanted. Then using the YouTube editor, I stitched them together. And it, while it worked, it was just nicer just to upload one video and have the thing just be up and that's it. So I kind of had to go ahead and make a new intro, which at certain point, I forget which episode number it was, I changed over, maybe even episode 30 or something. And I wasn't really feeling it, you know, a lot of these channels have animated intros and some don't have any at all, so I wanted something there. So now I just have a generic three second clip of my logo. And I, I like that, but I'd like it to be a little bit better. But that's a subject for another video. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this camera down, plug my microphone into my tablet, and then switch over, and then hopefully, when this is done, I should be able to either upload to YouTube as separate videos and then you, edit it that way or maybe I'm just gonna break down and buy a better piece of software I've already started looking at a few different videos online on what's out there now uh, I am using a PC so the whole Mac get you know get a program for your Macintosh thing like Final Cut or whatever that ain't gonna fly because I don't have anything to run it on so I got to find a good 
Windows editing software piece that's not going to cost me an arm and leg. That's relatively simple to use. I'm already getting better equipment. I'm trying to make better content here. So having a better video editor is obviously the next place to go. So without any further delay, let me cut the video here and switch over to the other camera. I went ahead and did a little demo of the camera with the mic hooked to it just to see how it worked with the tablet. And this is the same microphone hooked up to the camera I was using before, but I don't have the switch turned on for it because you're not supposed to have it on in the smartphone mode. You don't need the phantom power um, little booster circuit hooked up. It's not really phantom power, but you get the idea. It's just a little booster circuit. Uh, I'm not really terribly happy with the audio quality on this particular tablet with this mic, but it does sound a lot better than without the mic, which is for sure. It has something to do with the way the camera, maybe it's the codec it uses, uh, who knows. But the, besides the point, the idea is just to review the system I'm using now and get a better idea of how everything runs here. So this is the Panasonic HC-V770 full HD camera. It has a 50x eye zoom and I think it's a 20x optical zoom. The front has a 49 millimeter diameter lens here that you can screw other lenses on which is one of the reasons why I bought this camera. It also has a 29.5 millimeter wide angle lens. If I open the shutter here you can see that bad boy in there. Now this is an automated shutter. It does also have the camera light in the front here which I do like. It's handy to keep it at its minimum. Um, but I obviously I'm, I'm using external um, you know, mics and lights and all that stuff here. Now, this does have a 5.1 channel zoom mic on top. I believe the 5.1 channel input only works in the AVHCD mode, whereas the MP4 mode I'm usually using doesn't do that, but I only want left and right channel audio anyway, so that's not a deal breaker for me. It also has the um, windshield, like it says here, and it mentions that it's a zoom microphone. Now I have tested that out on camping trips and stuff because this camera is light. I don't have the, the specifics right in front of me now. I will put them in the description below as always. Um, but it is nice and light. The battery life isn't the greatest, but you can see it's not the biggest battery either. So you can go ahead and put a bigger battery or just carry a second one around. Eventually I will do that. They're not the cheapest thing either because it is a Panasonic battery. And I usually like to go with, you know, the OEM parts when I buy things because I've had situations with uh, knockoff parts just not working for me. Um, but as you can see, I'll, I'll take you on a walk around here. You do have a headphone jack. Your DC charging jack is over here. It charges on 5 volts DC. You have this nice little strap. It is pretty dang small. I don't have the biggest of hands, but it fits right. Up at the top here, you can see it has an icon for one of those near field communication systems. Now, I haven't had a chance to really use that with anything yet. Most of the time, I just pop the card out, which just sits in the bottom. Uh, and I just put this in my computer that way. That's the easiest way. I do. I, it came with the 32, big, uh, the 32 gigabyte chip in the kit that I bought. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get another one of those for when I'm out in the field. Because I do plan taking this on vacation, doing things like that. Now, I will point out that I didn't buy this camera. Uh, one of my coworkers uh, actually wanted to invest some money into the Pledgy Technical Services company. And I told him one of the things I wanted to do was start making YouTube videos. So he told me, go pick out a camera, find one you like, and it's going to be worthwhile for you. And I'll buy it for you. So if you're watching this video, thank you very much, Scott. So anyway... You can see it does have the hybrid optical image stabilization on it. And uh, this is actually a manual mode button. So you can actually click this button and put this into a manual mode and adjust the iris, uh, iris side, the shutter speed, the, um, the focus you can adjust on it. And there's a few other different things, which is another reason why I bought this camera. I like the option. This particular model, I'm going to say, is just where the consumer line stops and the prosumer line starts. Because there are models just below this that have similar functionality but doesn't have like the, you know, Wi-Fi and the little doohickey here. And the next step up from this is actually a 
full 4K definition camera. And that one actually has another little camera on the side here that you use in lieu of the Wi-Fi camera. So you can actually swivel it back and face yourself if you want. Uh, on the side over here, we have the shoe adapter, which I have in my pocket or something over here. Yeah, here it is. And this just clips in the back and gives you the shoe option, which again is another reason why I bought this camera. I wanted to have the ability to hook things to it, not have you know little adapters coming off the bottom or whatnot. And I will get into this in a little bit because obviously you can only hook one device to it. So if you want to hook up multiple devices, you may want to get yourself a different mount to clip to this. But as it sits right now, it's in a really good location. I'll actually pop the battery off here and I'll show you the details of that. You can see it's a 1940 milliamp hour, 7.0 watt hour battery at 3.6 volts. The back of the unit here, it has the Intertech designation on it instead of a UL listing which is pretty neat but then again it is an international camera and has the input 5.0 volt 3.6 volt 7.7 watts that's the gist of that we open it up and you can see on the side over here external microphone this is your standard AV input for hooking up to old-fashioned TVs if you will you have a USB output I've never actually used this because like I said I hook the car directly so I can't tell you there's any additional functionality that this has that you wouldn't normally have then of course you have your mini HDMI this is your shoe release so you can just slide this down and just pull right out and then your various buttons this is like a, a level button you can turn the camera on and off from here if you want to keep the screen open uh, we also have the play record button here and then this turns the Wi-Fi on and off you have a little speaker right here touch screen of course this has your standard it flips all the way around now when this flips all the way around you can't use this for anything it just becomes a a, a view a viewpoint basically so you can't actually manipulate the camera from here which is a little bit of a bummer but not a deal breaker i could turn i could actually shut it like that if i'd like or you could turn it it does turn the other way and that's about as far as that goes there so you do have a pretty good range of motion and i should point out when it's like this it also mirrors the image too and that's all I can really show you with the camera off. So I'm going to go ahead and hook the battery up. Made that a little bit more difficult than it should have been. You see it fires right up. It tells you it's in video recording mode. And uh, I have the level indicator on there. There's a ton of settings in this thing. I'm not going to walk you through all of them. That's what the book is for. There's just too much to cover here for this video. This is more of like a general kind of video. But you can see here, you can scroll left or right in here and you can adjust all the functions. Like you could turn the little light on, which you can see right here. You can put on auto mode if you want. There's a, a pre-record function, which will actually record X amount of time before you actually hit the record button, which is great if you're in like a concert or some sporting event someplace and you don't want to be running the camera the entire time, but yet you don't want to miss anything. Um, there's other options in here too and depending on what mode you're in there's more options you know you can turn the stabilization on and off you can actually have this track the faces and stay focused on them at all times if you'd like if you click this uh, IA up here you can see there's different modes like scene select and here's the manual and this actually does have a slow motion effect for capturing you know high speed stuff which is pretty cool HDR is basically if you want to go from light to dark back to light again, you know, this automatically compensates for that, which is actually really nice. Um, this is intelligent plus mode, which you can see you can adjust like the hue and saturation. And you really do have a lot of flexibility with this camera. Um, it's one of those things, since I'm not a professional and I don't really know 100% I'm doing with this, there's probably more here than I needed to do. But again, I wanted to have those functions in this camera. Uh, and again, if I go ahead and get a better grade camera, I'm going to, you know, use this one as a backup or a secondary, you know, system. So I'm actually going to have to cut this video for just a moment because my tablet's dying, which is annoying. And I'll be right with you. One of the cool things about this tablet, though, is it is voice activated. So once I get everything hooked up, I just have to give it a command and it starts recording, which is pretty sweet. So that makes that a little easier. 
Um, sometimes technology can be so awesome, but sometimes you can have so much of it in front of you, it just overwhelms you. And, and while I am really good with this stuff, when you don't know how to use all of it, and you have more options than you know what to do with, it does kind of overwhelm you a little bit. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and put this camera to the side right now, and I'm gonna bring the bag over and show you everything this came with as a kit. I got this from uh, Kometa Camera because they seemed like they had the best price for what you were getting. And pretty much everything that's in here it came with, and if it didn't, I'll point that out. So of course you got the bag. Let's go around the bag. You see we have a pocket in the back, in that pocket, I have the little USB adapter for the camera. We also have the mini HDMI, the standard HDMI adapter. And by the way, none of these videos look as good as they can viewing them back through the camera on a TV through this cable. That's the best way to do it. Um, even when I view them back on my computer, I don't really have the best software to view them. Sometimes, you know, it skips frames or the audio doesn't synchronize. And unless you're using the software that came with the camera to which you edit it with, viewing it in that looks great, but trying to view it in like Windows 10's uh, movie play or anything like that, it just doesn't sound and look as good. Which I'm not faulting the camera, I'm faulting the software. If I had a better playback system, it wouldn't be such a big deal, but honestly it doesn't matter to me because once I'm done I will upload it to YouTube and I'm watching them on there anyway, so not a big deal. But this is the charge cable for the camera as you can see it's also usb that's pretty much it for the cabling for this and that's also pretty much it for the little pockets on the side here now there are all these side zipper pockets um, first we come to the lens cleaning kit this as you can see it's got the little dust blower micro cleaning cloth these are like tissue paper lens lens tissues yeah, that's a better way to say it cotton swabs and cleaning solution I'm pretty, pretty sure if my memory stands me corrected, unless I stand to be corrected, this is from Precision Designs, which also made the case. They also made the little tripod that I did another review of, which of course is part of this kit, so I will put it into frame even though it doesn't fit. Uh, on the other side over here, we have the Sunpak 36 LED unit, and this uses the 5050 style LEDs. So each of these cells has three segments to it, which is how you get your 36. It runs on three AAA batteries, which is kind of annoying. I would rather have seen it run on AA batteries. You get a little bit more power out of it in the long run. Uh, I do anticipate doing some kind of a modification on this where I can actually have a plug coming out of it and plug it in. So when I'm here in the studio, or in the lab, depending on which end you want to look at it, I can actually use this and plug it in. But, you know, it's it's bright. I mean, it, it is bright. It does have two brightness settings on it, which is sweet. But, you know, compared to the 10 watt LED I have above the desk and the strips of LED and the main light, it, it's pretty unnoticeable. So, yeah, this is good to hook to the camera itself and use it if you're using it mobile and you just want to walk around with it and you don't want a big hunking light on it. But beyond that, you'd want a better light. But again, this is an introductory kit. I wasn't sure how many of these videos I would do. So I, you know, don't want to spend a boatload on camera equipment. So this was a good way to start. Now I should point out uh, that actual light came with a bracket of its own as I knock it over here, which is the C-shaped bracket which would screw into the bottom of the camera with this adjustable uh, nut at the bottom. It does have a rubberized piece, and there's actually two hot shoe mounts. And they're actually rails, so if you want, you can just slide this guy in, get it anywhere you want, and then you just tighten this down, and it will stay right there. Pretty neat. So if you want, you could put that and put a microphone on top, and there you got a little stand. Now this is great for those little point-and-shoot cameras, because you could put this right up on top, and there you go. Or if you have a GoPro, it would be perfect because you could put your little GoPro right in here and you have yourself a nice little mount. This particular camera, though, if I put this on the bottom here, which I don't mean to do this off camera, but there. The problem with this is, is it cuts into my strap. I can't put my hand in here, so I got to put this on some kind of an angle. And, well, you'd say, well, why would you do that? You already have one here. Well, I would do that because maybe I want to use the microphone at the same time that I have. 
So you can see, you can just set it like that and put the microphone in front of it, but then the light's being blocked by the mic, so it's, eh, it's a little annoying. Plus, not only that, but this screw, the way this sits up like this, when you go to put this on a tripod and you sit this in here like this, it, it wants to turn. It doesn't want to sit still because there's not enough bite on there to hold it flat. So that's a little annoying. It could be a little better, but like I said, it's not. A, I'm not going to fault the camera on this because this this hole could be anywhere on any other camera. So it's not such a bad thing. You know, it's just kind of like pick and choose your battles. Now, if I'm using the light with the microphone I have clipped to my shirt, that doesn't matter. I can use them both because I'll just have the wire for the mic coming out of here, and then the light can stay on the camera. I should also point out, I have the tripod with the tablet mounted on it in the same position I normally would but because the field of view on this tablet is a lot different as this is a smaller lens it seems like I'm really close up to it when I'm not you see I come down here in the table to being like super close to it whereas the other camera I don't really have that problem with this camera I should say uh, now I'll get into some more pieces here because I can uh, here's that microphone I was telling you about. This is the VidPro XM-8 microphone. And this is what I was using for the longest time. Let me just take this out. Oh yeah, I should point out too that there's a hot shoe mount in the bottom. So you could actually mount this on its own tripod if you want. And this guy just sits up here like this. Screws in. Like I said in the video of the review I did for it, it's not the best boom mic. Most of them are longer and they come out. In fact, when you plug this in, it gives you a little warning message about the external mic being plugged in. And obviously, if it's up here, it's behind the lens. It's not going to obstruct anything. But if you have one of these longer units on it, you will see it out the top of the screen. That's one thing to keep in mind. Um, that also came with its own adapter which is this one here and again this is adjustable so if you want you can go ahead and stick this on the side of the camera like a so and put this on the side on the bottom like so again though it doesn't have the best screw on the bottom and this thing wants to teeter-totter every which way I mean they both have screw holes on it not not a big fan of this one either. Now the thing I do like about it is I still can put my hand in here and I can actually angle this one sideways and have it stick out in front of the camera and if you do it right you can actually do it and not see the microphone pop up on the viewfinder but if you get anywhere where there's light or anything like that you get the shadow effect so you know it's not really the best solution so it really depends on what accessories you want to take with you depending on which ones you need to use, obviously. Oh, when I get the new mount I have coming, it's one of those V-mounts, so it'll, it'll clip in here. It'll have another hot shoe right in the middle. It comes up to an angle and has a little shelf with a, a hot shoe mount, and then it comes up the other side a little higher with another shoe. So you can actually put a screen, the light, and the microphone all together in this one mount, which would be really handy. Moving along with the rest of the kit here. Let me just uh, take this apart, put this here, put that there. All right. We have a Vivitar UV filter in the 49 millimeter. And that just goes ahead and screws in the front of the camera. Nothing spectacular there. I do use this when I'm outside. Don't really do a whole lot of outside stuff in the winter time, but it still has its usage. We have the charger, of course. And this is a 110 to 240 volt input, 2 uh, 0.25 amps at 50 to 60 hertz with an output voltage of 5 volts, 1.8 amps. Double insulated, standard, standard, standard. I don't know how well it is, you know, if it's a great adapter, I'm not going to do a teardown of it or anything like that. I will tell you that I have plugged my camera into another power supply and it caused a lot of flickering on the screen and stuff. So I immediately disconnected it, went back to this. Again, OEM parts. Uh, came with one of these little wallets, which, you know, unless you have a lot of SD cards, may or may not be useful. But you can hold, uh, I think, six regular cards and then two micro SD cards and these little adapters if you'd like. Of course, you could just take them out and just put the regular SDs in it. 
We also have um, a little precision design SD, micro SD to USB card reader. Part of the kit, not really necessary. You do have all the adapters and I have a memory card reader in my computer for the camera. So, although I have found uses for it because sometimes my card reader doesn't like to work because it was cheap. And cheap things tend to do those things sometimes. And uh, I think the only two things left in here are, again, another precision design piece. This is a lens set. Here's the little adapter. So I think this is a 58 millimeter. Yeah, this is a 58 millimeter professional HD DSLR MC autofocusing 0.45x wide angle lens made in Japan. Uh, it has the little dust cap for the top, the bottom one unscrews, and the bottom one, great. The bottom one has a macro lens, so you can actually unscrew this and then jam this guy into the front of the camera and you have yourself a nice macro lens for getting up close. And I have used this in some of the builds that I did where I really want to get close to the circuit board. And I'm, I'm quite impressed with it. It works really well. It was uh, definitely a good addition to have on this set. But if I just go ahead and show you, I can screw this adapter on the back. And then I can screw this right to the front of the camera. Now I mentioned when you have this thing loaded up with the microphone and the lens and all that stuff, that lens is kind of heavy. That adds a lot more weight to this. That little chintzy stand you see sitting in there in the corner, the minute you have this thing on, it either wants to tip straight down like that or it wants to just fall over. And in the middle of your recording, it just dunk. And yeah, luckily I catched up the corner of my eye and I literally catch the things as it's falling and I prevented this thing from getting significant damage to it. Now, obviously, I have a much better tripod. Uh, I mentioned this tripod holds 17 pounds. I was incorrect. It actually holds 27 pounds. So I've actually changed that in the previous video. Uh, you can see I do have one little tiny battle scar right here where it dinged. But the lens is okay. The, I think the camera was off when that happened, so the image stabilization part was locked in place, so that wasn't such a big deal. And, uh, well, lastly... The other pouch is the opposite of the wide-angle lens. It's a telephoto lens. And this one's the heavier of the two. And you can see this is a 2.5x. So what this is doing is it's multiplying that 20x or adding to the 20x. I don't really know. I'll have to figure that out. But I have tested this out. You can zoom in a lot further with this. But of course, when you're zoomed in, the slightest motion translates into a great motion. So I try not to zoom out that far, unless of course I have a more stable platform, which of course now I do. So that's something I will start using more of, but probably not on this channel. I'm probably gonna use this more on my personal channel where I do a lot of hiking and camping and stuff like that. And you know, having a wide angle telephoto, you know, lens combination would be a little bit better because you're gonna get more uh, usage out of that, I guess you could say. Um, but the, the macro lens is definitely the, the best deal out of all of them for me. So question is, is how much did this cost? Well, the camera, the lenses, the mic, the light, the cleaning kit, the little wallet, the tripod, the pouch, and everything you pretty much see here on the table cost me $600, which I think is pretty good considering this camera is like 550 or five something last time I saw it. So that's a pretty damn good deal. Now, obviously there's cheaper cameras on the market, but again, functionality wise, the features I have with this thing, the recording quality, I can go on, have been superb. So it was definitely well worth, well worth the money. I, I enjoy doing these videos. I have a lot of fun doing them. Uh, I have a lot of fun editing them, believe it or not. Uh, for every minute I spend recording it is another minute I have to watch it back on the computer. And then another minute I have to spend editing it. And you can imagine the time adds up pretty darn quickly. And considering that I want to actually have my personal channel have more of a blog format to it. I'll be spending quite a bit of time in front of these cameras and in front of my computer, but all in the name of entertainment. So with that, of course, I'd like to thank you for watching my videos. I really appreciate the subscribers that stick around and keep watching them. 
Uh, I know the subject matter kind of bounces all over the place, but that's the nature of myself. And, well, I don't really have much more to say about this, so I'm going to thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. I almost got away easy. I forgot to show you some of the functions of the Wi-Fi. So what I did is I set the tablet up to act as a remote, and it's actually called Link to Cell. The phone I'm holding in my, well, the camera I'm holding in my hand doesn't have anything on the viewfinder. I'm just holding it. Everything that you see in the viewfinder, you can see right here in front of you, which is why you have that parallaxing thing. And you can see by my hand in the background there, there is quite a bit of a delay. Which is really funny. But anyway, I can adjust this uh, zoom in and out. This is how you record, obviously. But the thing about that record button is, is the only way you could tell it's recording is this little tiny record button up here. When it's paused, which if I hit the button, it will pause and you won't see this recording, but you'll have the two little pause icon up here. And I should also mention the speakers on this tablet output whatever audio the camera's hearing. So I actually had to turn the volume down because I was getting this crazy feedback loop. But it's nice because it tells you your battery life remaining, it shows you all that stuff. Now what would you use this for? Let's say you're one of these crazy guys on YouTube that has their uh, guns out in their backyard and they're shooting at targets and they have their camera set up and so on and so forth. You can have your tablet over where you're shooting from and have this camera out on the tripod behind a piece of uh, ballistic glass or something, of course. And you don't have to run out there to hit the record button every few seconds. You have it right there in front of you, which is pretty darn neat. Uh, I was initially toying around with the idea of using this because I'm not... In, I'm not behind the camera, I'm in front of the camera or to the side of the camera and I don't really have the option of starting and stopping it because I have to get up from what I'm doing and yeah, you get the idea. So with this, I can have the tablet in front of me and just hit the button. But the delay and you know, you gotta have the tablet plugged in so you don't, it doesn't die out on you so that's you know another device plugged in here at the same time. Usually you have the camera plugged in and yeah. yeah. What I eventually would like to do is, is find a way to mount the tablet here in these arms somehow. So when I have the camera hooked up, I can use the tablet as a uh, remote of sorts, like a local remote, remote. I would actually prefer if it had a hardwired remote that you can hook to here. So as you're using these arms here, you can just go ahead and, you know, do everything from there without having to, you know, touch the camera. But I digress. The other things this will do if I back out of here, I'll stop the recording. I'm going to put this into the twin camera mode so you can get a shot of how that looks. And this is the dual mode. You can see in the bottom left of the screen, we're looking at the camera on the table. You can see my hand waving in front of it. And then my hand's over here. There is a bit of a delay, as one would expect. In fact, let me get the same angle here. We'll see how much delay there really is. It's it's there, it's not terrible, but it is there. So like I said, if I want, I can actually adjust this back and get into frame finally. Hey, look at that. Hello. So yeah, I can actually stand around over here and go, ooh. And you can see me on both of them. Now, I should point out the way this works is you have to take this camera and it broadcasts an SSID that this tablet here has to connect to. Before, when I had the remote system set up, the way it actually worked was I was connected to my home Wi-Fi system and that's how it was linking. So the home Wi-Fi obviously need to be in that area, whereas the local SSID, I could take these two devices anywhere and still use this technology, which is pretty neat. But the remote functionality does, does, does not seem to work unless you have an actual Wi-Fi signal. The good part about this is I could put this camera all the way back in my shed if I want and come in here with this tablet and still utilize it. Pretty neat. But the functionality, this does have some usages. So I could be sitting here like recording, uh, you know, I'm setting off fireworks or something and I'm like, ooh, look at the fireworks, whoa! I could like, you know, have my crazy reactions over here while you're watching the main event and the camera over here. Um, of course, the 4K camera has a camera right here on the viewfinder, which is nice because then you can just swivel that around and then just get your reaction 
you know, you're already looking at the screen anyway. I don't have to sit here and look at another camera like that. And I did play around with this a little bit. Apparently, I can just uh, hook up any camera. It doesn't have to be a smartphone with an app, as long as it has Wi-Fi on it. So I can get another one of these cameras and do that. I can also use, um, I think I could use a USB camera. I have to check that out because if that's the case, I can plug my um, bore scope into this camera. You know what? I should actually try that out and see if that works now that I think about that. And the answer to that question is no. You can't hook up this camera to it, which is a little bit of a bummer. It doesn't support wireless uh, USB OTG. You have to have a wireless camera over Wi-Fi to do it. Not a deal breaker. I'm sure I'm coming across the Wi-Fi, another Wi-Fi camera at some point. Well, to end this video, I can give you my final thoughts. If there's one thing about this camera I could change, it's the location of the ports. Having them on the other side of the door is a little bit of a nuisance. I would have much rather have seen this uh, camera have ports you know, like where the where the charger adapter was or where the micro headphone jack was on the strap side of the camera. So I can hook up all the devices there over here on this side and be able to shut the screen if I didn't need the screen. But then again, that's all minor things. Most of these cameras shut off when you have the screen closed anyway, so it's not such a huge deal. But yeah, I, you know, when I have this thing set up on my tripod, I kind of just leave everything plugged in and just hit the off button on the side over here, and that's, that, that works for me. But again, I already said thanks for watching, and I came back and kind of added more content to this video, so I'm just going to say it again. Thanks for watching. See you next time.